Hey guys, my name is Samson, I'm SMK alumni. Today I will be giving you a guide on your dream studies at SMK. I will take you through the process of uh, applying. The application portal is quite simple and easy to use and it's user friendly. But some of you might face some difficulties. That is the essence of having this video in order to guide you through. Okay, so once you log in into the SMK website, you click on apply here and this is what you get. Uh, so you click register here on this tab. And since you are a new applicant, you have to click I'm a new applicant, click on this. And the tab is going to request you to put in your email address. So let's do that together. So I have typed in my email address here. And the next thing you have to do is to register. So once you register, you get uh, a one-time login in which will be sent directly to your email. And once you get this one-time login, it comes with a PIN code. The PIN code is usable for your future reference. Let's say, for example, if you want to, if you forget your password and you want to reuse another password, this PIN code will often come and it helps you for easy access. So let's go through my inbox and see if I've gotten any notification from SMK Dream ID. Yes, I did that. I just got that. So the next thing for you to do is start the registration with your full name. What's my full name? My full name is Samson. Toy, surname. Make sure the full name here is the name as it is written on your passport. Because once you register, that is what is going to appear on the day, on the upper tab of your portal. So make sure it is your full name that is written. Most of you, if you have two names and other surname, please make sure all that is written on the passport has to be on your registration portal. So let's go further. So Samson Toye, and now the next thing is for you to choose a password. Make sure you create a password in which it will be easy for you to remember. So once you click register, then this is where the work starts. So you see on this, uh, on this uh, application, my full names appear, Toy Samson. My mobile number, make sure you can use any of your no mobile number. If you have your own number working, let's say, or you have a WhatsApp number, also because let's say we have a difficult uh, way of reaching you by, by email, we could contact you via your mobile number. So make sure your mobile number is there. And also your citizenship, this is very, very important because once you put a citizenship which is within the EU, at the last process of the application where you are expected to upload some document, it will request you to upload an ID because ID is pertaining to EU resident. And if you have come in from other countries, let's say like India, Nigeria, Pakistan, most of you have only passport, not ID. So it will ask you to upload only your passport. So make sure your citizenship, please check this very way. And also what is the effect of citizenship? It has effect in the price of the tuition fee and the price on the application fee. So make sure the citizenship is been put correctly. So I am from Nigeria, so I will put my citizenship as Nigeria. And there is another tab, tab about reference code. This reference code is pertaining to students who are coming from different agent representative. Each agent is being assigned a code. So please make sure if you're coming from an agent, ask your agent what is the code, because this also is going to help in facilitating the process. Let's say, for example, we are having difficulties in reaching you, we can communicate your agent, and, and this will help to proceed your application faster. So what's my reference code? Since I'm not coming from an agent, so I will leave this tab empty. And the next thing for you is to do is to click the terms, to click agree on the terms and condition of processing. Make sure you click I agree to the terms and condition of data processing. If you like, if you would like to receive newsletter from us, and this is very good, you will get an update information about, let's say, for example, we have a new study program, we have a new offer regarding accommodation, scholarship opportunities, 
information that will be useful for you to take you through the process of your studies, you will get it through the newsletter. So I will encourage you to click receive newsletter. So I am going to do that now. Then click continue. So next, since I've already registered and uh, now the next thing is for you to browse the program you are willing to apply. So you see the tab here on top, which is browse the study program. You click on the browse and you see varieties of study programs in which we have uh, transport and logistic. You see the semester of application either fall or spring. You see the application deadline. You see the timing of the deadline. We are very strict with deadlines. So I will advise you to make sure you start your application as soon as possible. Even though there is no, it is not a necessity for you to submit the application on the same day. It is a process in which it is not, you have to start today and submit today because there are some information that will still be needed later and you don't have it at that particular moment. Let's say from a reference, you need a reference to be written and you can put the information about uh, who you want to use as a reference here. And also, we can also message the reference. Uh, we can also mes message the person ourselves. So this is a process stuff in which, from the beginning to the end, I think it is for you to fill everything carefully. So now that we have the study programs here, these are all the programs in which SMK offers. And uh, let's see, I'm going to take one as an example of the study program. Let me take international business as an example. So apply now, the application for four semester 2022 international business is currently on now. And the deadline is 15th of July, 2022 at 11.59 midnight. So I will start my application now. I'll click on apply now. So we I in the tab of profile now. So this is a profile where you are giving a brief information about yourself, who are you, your nationality, your information about the document in which you will be presenting. So let's take an example. My name is Samson, my surname is Toye, which is seen also as family name. But on my passport, I do have another name that appears, which is Abiodun. So, I will give an example on my middle name. So let me write on my middle name here, Abiodun. Make sure all your full names are typed clearly. If you have a middle name, please make sure it reflects in your application here. And the next thing is the gender. Please make sure your gender is indicated. The citizenship also has to reflect here. So let's go to the part of the passport. Your passport has a passport identification number and it's on the top of every passport issued or below uh, whatever passport in which you are showing us. But it has to be a passport that you can use to travel uh, from one country to another. So make sure your passport number is written here. The issue date should be written here. You can see there is a calendar, automatic calendar that helps you in which to write when the passport is being issued. And when the passport is going to expire also, please make sure it is written here. And one thing about the passport I would like to emphasize on is that make sure the passport in which you'll be providing has a validity of not later than six months of expiry date because this is not going to only have effect on your application but also when you're going to the embassy because the embassy is going to require you to have a passport that has a validity at least a minimum of six months. So please put this in mind. And the next thing is your date of birth. So your date of birth, please make sure the calendar also is here. Make sure you input your date of birth. And your place of birth, the place of birth is mostly on some passport. Why some other passport, the place of birth doesn't appear. Please make sure you put the place of birth here. And the next is a formal photo. Make sure looking handsome or pretty well photo, just make sure you can upload it on your formal photo it has to be formal it doesn't have to be for photo in which let's say you you are in the midst of party it has to be a formal one that is why it is written here as a formal one so once this section is done the next thing you have to do now is to click the next page so since i haven't indicated all my information here so i would just instead of me clicking the next page but i would i would just 
go through this, the next one here, which is the contact. You see, there is a notification here at the top of the screen, which says some information are not filled. If there is one or two information of you missing, you will see it at the top when going to the next page. Please make sure you pay attention to this. And once this message appears, you won't be able to submit your application. So let's go to the part, to the section of contacts. So in this section of contact, if you see that the previous email address you provided, you don't have access to it anymore. You can change your email. There is a tab which is change my email address. If you create a new email, you can easily change that here. Your address, your current address where you live, let's say you are not in a country of origin, you've traveled abroad, make sure the current address where you live in, make sure you put it inside this box. The, car, the province, the city, the region, postal code, country, and also telephone. This is very, very important because sometimes we want to call you, we want to arrange an interview, pre-interview to prepare you to the embassy. And maybe some of you are having problem with network back in your home country. And I'm sure mobile network is always available, so we might want to reach you via Instagram or Telegram or anyone in which you prefer. So it will be always good for you to give us your accurate working telephone number, your mobile number, work number. If you have different form of numbers that we can reach you, it's very good. And also emergency contact. Please, if you have anyone in which, let's say, the EU or in Lithuania or in any other country that you think we could reach faster if we are having difficulties in reaching you, please put the name of the person, the telephone, and the relation of the person to you. So once that one is done, we go to the next one, which is your educational information. And your educational information is information about your previous education in which you've attained. So the educational information is very simple, very easy. You can see everything is clear. It starts with your level of education and which is the secondary school. You know, this is a prerequisite in order for you to go into higher education. You have to finish your secondary school education. We have a situation where some students have finished their bachelor degree and they just want to enroll for a second bachelor degree. That's not a problem. You can also put in the information here. But at first, you have to make sure your secondary education is being filled, levels education secondary, the name of your secondary school, Please make sure, let's say if you finish KKK secondary school, please do that. The program name, which is going to be Senior Secondary School Education, you can put that here. The awarded qualification, what is the name of the secondary school called? Is it called Senior Secondary Education? Is it called Advanced Secondary School? Is it called O Level? Any form in which it is identified in different country with different name. Please put it in award, awarded qualification degree. And also the expected date of graduation, the date in which you graduated, please put it here. As you can see, one thing now I forgot to mention in which I just remember now is every of those section with the red star has to be filled. And these are compulsory. This information will be very useful for you and for us in processing your application. So going to the next one, the country in which your secondary school education has been attained has to be put here. And uh, your study program, uh, your study program language, let's say the secondary school, if you are from non-English speaking country and your edu secondary school education was organized in Spanish, please put that here because that will help us to know that you know more than one or two different language and you can see here there is insert new block this new block is if you have finished more than secondary school if you finish let's say a degree back in your home country or in another country this is also a plus so you can click insert new block and you, once you click that then you can click here pre-education bachelor degree or even if you finish master's degree it is not a crime to start a new study program uh, in an, for, for a bachelor degree. So you can click bachelor, uh, master's degree, bachelor degree, vocational, pre-education, and put the same information, the same repeated information 
about secondary school, you can repeat it here. Once that one is done, the next thing is to click language. So let's look at the languages. First, we have to start about your native language. What native languages do you speak? Let's say, in my own case, my native language is Yoruba, and you can see Yoruba appears here. All native languages uh, which are globally recognized will reflect here. So Yoruba, after clicking Yoruba, the next thing is for you moving to other foreign languages in which you speak. Foreign language could be English, Russian, it could even be Lithuanian, Spanish, Italian, French. Please do that here. So one of the foreign languages I speak is Lithuania, so I will click that here, Lithuania. And the proficiency of my Lithuanian is still A2 or B1. So I can click here B1. And if I have sat for any language examination or test, I can add the additional information here. And one thing I forgot to mention here is the, ex uh, the study year or experience I have in this language. If it is, you f have this language for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. So you can also state it in a studies experience of the language. Now let's go to this section of employment. This employment section is for you to describe your work-related experience. If you have any several positions in which you had, that could be an additional factors for you when we are evaluating your application. So and next is the activity. The activities, I guess most of you have different kind of activities that keeps you busy. Whatever activities you have, please make sure you mention here. Uh, I'll give an example. Let's say the nature of my activity here is I play football, and football is also an activity. So football, and where do I play this football? The organization, and maybe I play with some football clubs, and one of the football clubs in which I played with is uh, SK League. You can put it here. And from where until when does this football activities happen? So once you do that, you save it and go to the next section, which is going to be the residence. Residence is for those who have lived outside their home country. Let's say if, if you have stayed abroad for some extended period as a foreign exchange student or working, traveling independently, you can put this here in this box. The country in which you stayed before Lithuania, you can click stayed in Belarus. Click on Belarus here. The purpose of stayed, maybe you were there for working or you were there to study. So study. And from when to when also. After that is filled, the next is to go to reference. The reference is very, very important. And we know it might be difficult for some of the students to get reference. Maybe you've lost contact with your secondary school teacher, with your guidance. That is why we require at least one reference. That will be sufficient for us to know about you from another person's perspective. So please add one reference from current or your former teacher. And if you find it difficult to get a reference from your teachers, maybe your uncle or your nephew or your niece could write a reference about our future student. Who is our future student? The referee name should be written fully here. After the referee name and the referee's email should be written here. Let's see the ref this is the referee email. The referee name is this. And we as an institution, we can email the referee and our seven ask for a reference from the referee about you. So after that is done, the next is the motivation. The motivation, this is where you have to prove to us why you choose this specific program and what motivates you to choose this specific program. You know, some of you might be difficult for you in writing a long essay, but we've made it in an effective way of analyzing what you've written to 500, minimum of 500 words, and not more than 1,000. We know some of you like to write, but we believe between 500 to 1,000 words 
who will get what motivates you to choose this specific study program. This specific study program would be mostly about why did you choose this program? I have chosen international business. What motivates me? Maybe I just foresee myself being a future entrepreneur. I'm so much desired by startup. I'm so much into sustainable business. This could be mentioned also in a international, uh, why I choose international business. After that one is done with motivation, the next box is document. Document is very, very important section. Why? Because we want to see all those documents in which you will be sending to us. We want to see how accessible and how authentic are those documents. That is why it is stated clearly. The document should be scanned originally. Make sure you scan it clearly. It is clear we can see the information. Don't use your phone. We know some of you might find some difficulties in finding a scanner machine. But smartphone has different application in which you can install your phone and you can use that application to scan document. So please make sure the document is well scanned. Here at the section of the document, you can click on the checklist. In the checklist, you will see all documents that are needed to be provided. But before we go to that, after this section of our document, we see we have a section which is order, which is your medical information. In case you consider it is important for us to know about your medical history and your needed medically so we can know what our applicant is requiring from us medically. And also additional information, if you want to give us more additional information about yourself in which we haven't requested for in one each of this section, you can add it here. And information source, we want to know where you are about SMK, what motivates you to study in SMK, maybe it was through our university website, you just came uh, to SMK through our university website, maybe it was one of your family or friend that recommended SMK to you, that would be good. Internet search, study fear, any one of these, the source of your information about SMK, please make sure it is indicated. And this section, the information source, it won't allow you to submit if you haven't indicated any source here. As you can see, it is star with red, so it is a necessity for you to submit where you've gotten information about SMK. And the last but not the least, which is the most important, is the checklist. So let's go through the checklist. What do we have? What are the documents you have to submit? The first one is the official recognition by Lithuanian, the official qualification recognition. I know majority of you have huge questions about what does this mean? What is the essence of this? This is very important as most of you are foreign applicants and there is a stated regulation that every applicant applying to Lithuania have to make sure each of the academic documents, the previous academic documents have been submitted to see how equivalent they are to Lithuanian uh, secondary school. So that is why it is compulsory for you to get this done. So I will just, it might look complicated, but it's really easy. So I'll just give you an overview of how to get this done. So once you get here, there is a link here. This is the first link in which you can read about the SKVC. As you can see, this SKVC is a center for quality assessment in higher education in Lithuania. Their purpose is to assess your previous education if everything is okay, if you have met the minimum requirement to study in any one of Lithuania higher education. The process is faster and they are, the, uh, the system is user friendly. So you can here check here what are the country specific requirements. You can check, okay, I'm from Nigeria. I want to check what document I will need to submit in order for me to get my previous qualification recognized. From Nigeria, you can see here it is stated Senior Secondary School Certificate, either WAEC or NECO Certificate, please make sure this certificate you will be providing is issued by the recognized board, which is either WAEC or NECO. And the second is Scratch Card. The Scratch Card is the card in which you use to get information about the exam online. So I'm sure majority of those people who are from Nigeria can get that anyway, and they are acquainted to that. 
After you already provided information about your senior secondary school, if you have finished bachelor education somewhere and you want to get it recognized, these are the two requirements for Nigerians. The diploma has to be original and the official academic transcript, which has to be emailed directly to the office of SKVC. You can see the address is here. Uh, and once you send it to them, they acknowledge they've received this information. So let's get back to this SKVC on our admission portal. So here we can see this uh, recognition. I go back, I'll go back to the recognition. The first part of the recognition is just to read what is SKVC all about? Because you have a question about this, and this is the question in which most of the students ask. And the second one is, how do I get started? So if you want to get started, you have to click the second link here. After getting familiar with the process, with the information about the SKVC, the next thing is to get your recognition start. So you click the second link. Once you click it, the link, then it brings you to this page, epe.skvc.lt slash en. And here, you have to start the process of your SKVC. This is very simple, user-friendly, and it is, you can easily access how the process of your recognition is going on. Once you finish the process of recognition here, what you have to do is this. You have to come back to this SMK portal, admission portal. Let's say you haven't finished your SKVC. Your SKVC is still under process. You can just write additional comment here. My SKVC is still under the process of recognition. And for every recognition, once you submit your SKVC, you get SKVC application number. Each applicant gets that. You can even include your application number, SKVC application number here. Why? Because that will help us also to track the process of your application as an institution to ask SKVC what is needed regarding this applicant, why is the process taking longer than usual if it happens. So once that is done, after this official qualification recognition, the next is to go to proof of English language proficiency. You click this English language proficiency. This section, if your previous education has been conducted in English, you do not need to provide any extra certificate regarding this. So what you have to click from this section is, I do not need to take an English test because I have completed my previous education in English language. If you are from non-English speaking country and uh, you've sat for any of these professional English tests, then you can click, I have attached sufficient proof of my English language. Let's go to the program of English Foundation Program. We have a program called English Foundation Program. And this English Foundation Program are for those students who want to improve their English language proficiency. So you will come across proof of English language proficiency. What do you have to do in this? You just have to click, I have not yet taken an English test. Or you can write it in this comment that I am coming from for English language proficiency. Once we see your application that is for English language foundation, we will exempt English language proficiency in you. I'm not very sure if the system will even show you proof of English language proficiency, but if it does, just make sure in the comment, additional comment, I am coming for English foundation program, therefore I do not need proof of English language proficiency. So once that one is done, then the next is entry qualification. The entry qualification is where you have to upload a scan copy, clear scan copy of your high school diploma. Make sure the, it is clear enough for us to see. Once that is completed, let's go further to the next one is the translation of document. If the document in which you are presenting, if it is not in a language in which we could easily understand or comprehend with. It has to be translated to either English language, Lithuanian language, or Russian language. And here, once you click the original document in accepted language, if it is in English, you click that. And if you have already translated the document into either English, Lithuanian, or Russian language, please you can click, I have attached the translation to the application. 
Further, we go and document formalities. You have read all the document formalities. What are the documents that are needed to be presented, that are needed to be uploaded, and how, what is the quality of it? So you click, I have fulfilled all the requirements. Let's go to the reference. In a case that you're still waiting for your reference to be submitted, maybe the person in which you requested for your reference haven't given information yet about you and you're still waiting and you don't want it to affect your application. So what you have to click here is, I have asked for reference. So once you click this, we know that you are still waiting for the reference to be sent. And we have a few more to go, which is one of the very important parts is the passport. If you are in the process of this application and you have not gotten a passport yet, we have students in which they don't want to miss the application deadline and they are in the process of receiving their passport. So there is an opportunity for you. This is a good news for you. And the good news is you can click here. We've created a slot which said, I have not, uh, I do not have my passport yet. So when we know you do not have your passport yet, we'll wait until your passport is being received before we process your application. And if you have the passport and you've attached it, so you click this third one which said, I have attached my passport. And proof of application fee. Each applicant I expected to pay an application fee of non-refundable 120 euro. So make sure your application fee receipt is being uploaded clearly here. If you find a problem getting the receipt, you can do a screenshot of the proof of application and please upload it here. There is a situation we have students saying, uh, due to the transaction charges from my home country, I will request to pay the application fee with the tuition fee. Please add it in the comment section here that I will request my application fee to be added to my tuition fee in order to pay altogether. But we always advise the student to pay the application fee first so that we can process their application. So once you pay the application fee, please click here and attach a proof of application fee. And we have a section about scholarship. The section about scholarship, I will advise you to read more about scholarship once you get to this section, because there are some requirements that has to be fulfilled before you can be awarded a scholarship. So we have different type of scholarship, which is the talent scholarship and also the Eastern Partnership countries who would like to apply for scholarship. Make sure you click this section. And once you click this section, you will see the scholarship uh, tab is going to give you more information about the scholarship the SMK offers, which is the 20% scholarship for the Eastern Partnership countries or the 40% talent scholarship. You can see here there are criteria for a student to meet in order to be considered for scholarship. So going back to the scholarship tab, once you've read the requirement to be fulfilled before you can be granted the scholarship, then you can decide if you, you still want a scholarship, if you don't want the scholarship, if you would like to apply for both scholarship, or if you would like to apply for either of both, let's say either talent or the Eastern Partnership country. And once you see that all those requirements for those scholarship, you are you are willing to meet those requirements, then why not? Then you can take a chance, you can take a shot on applying for the scholarship. Once that is done, and finally, this is where this application ends. So once, the applic once you fulfill all this information, I will advise you to cross-check once again before you submit. Of course, there is an opportunity for you to edit your application. Let's say the information you provided earlier has some errors so you can correct it. But the next thing is for you to submit. So once you submit your application, the institution, they receive your application, the admission office, then they evaluate your application and they write you whatever document is missing. But I do advise students to make sure to start the SKVC application and the SMK application at the same time. Because once you 
submitted your document for SKVC recognition, SKVC will require the institution in which you are applying to to send a proof of purpose. And the proof of purpose is a statement from an institution or an employee stating why this student is applying for recognition. Let's take an example of you applying to SMK. So SMK needs to send a proof of purpose to the SKV stating that we are considering this applicant for application. Therefore, we would like to send a proof of purpose on his or her behalf. So if your application, if your SKVC application hasn't come out yet, you can just make sure you're still in the process of your SMK application, just that you won't have to submit yet. You just make sure the information is being put and you can wait. Once the decision of the application uh, SKVC is out, you can put it on SMK and that should be okay. And overall, once you submit this application, you click submit here on this tab and you submit, you get an information, a confirmation that congratulations, your application has been submitted successfully. Then what's next? The next thing is for you to wait until the university, the admission office contacts you and ask you for either motivational interview or for any additional document you're missing. I believe all information provided in this video will be useful for you to help you fulfill your dream in applying at SMK. So whatever problem or difficulties you encounter during your process of admi admission, please feel free to contact admission at smk.lt. The staff will be willing to guide you through the process and your journey and your dream of making your studies in SMK completed. Thank you very much.